Greetings, Tony from Old River Hard Goods again. Today we're going to be talking about collectible bevel and tri squares for woodworking. Talk about some of the early models, some of the early patented ones, and it's a fascinating subject, and there's way more material than I can cover in just one video, but this will be a good introduction. So sit back and enjoy. And welcome to the wonderful world of squares and square collecting. Here we've got an assortment of bevel squares, a couple of miter squares, and of course tri-squares as well. Some of these are manufactured, some of them are user-crafted, but they're all neat, usable tools, and as I said, we'll be talking about more of them as we go along today. Okay, first we're going to look at bevel squares. The earliest bevel squares, of course, were made of wood with a screw, or sometimes you find them with just a rivet. This one's made of walnut, I believe, or maybe mahogany, hard to say. Got an early screw and nut combination on it. Don't know how old it is, but it's a neat, uh, neat old square. Back in the late 18th century, early 19th century, squares started showing up with metal blades and wooden handles. I don't have, I have an example here someplace, but it's buried. Uh, the jokes, Joseph Smith's explanation or key to the industries of Sheffield, England, published in 1818, shows them with both a top pivot and a center pivot. And they were made either with a rivet or with a slotted screw to lock the blade on. Some early American examples of bevel squares. Uh, here is a William and Charles Johnson. They were Philadelphia saw and uh, square makers who worked from 1833 to 1840. And it's also believed that Henry Diston may have apprenticed with them as well. A number of the other Philly makers also made squares. On the right here, we have a Seth Savage. He worked in Middletown, Connecticut, making squares from 1847 until 1855, until his company was purchased by Stanley. Another early American square maker, of course, was the Star Tool Company. They manufactured this style, which was patented by Leonard Howard on November 5th, 1867. Uh, they were both metal handles and wooden handles. These are both wooden handle models, but those are both collectible tools. This square here, typical 19th century Possibly English, possibly American, hard to say without a, a maker's name on it. Here we have a couple of distant squares, uh, later ones. This one's signed on the handle. This one's marked on the blade. Oops not getting away from me. Uh, these you can tell by the kind of distinctive cast iron or steel nuts that they have on them. This one's an early distance square. You can tell by the fancy cast brass screw. A lot of these weren't marked, but they are were made by distant. This one's a fairly uncommon 14 inch model. which is uh, the biggest one that they made. Here we have an oak leaf, sorry, oak leaf, made by the E.C. Simmons Company, uh, famous for their keen cutter line. And of course, no discussion of squares would be complete without talking about Stanley, because uh, that's one of the most common ones you find. Uh, this one is a Type 4, I believe, Type 3, Type 4, manufactured right about the turn of the century. You can tell by the patent date on the blade, if you can see it. And when we talk about Stanley tools, people have researched the various um, 
changes that were made over the years and put them into what are called types, type studies. And I've put a link to a page down in the descriptions where a fellow has done quite a very good job of listing uh, all of these different types and uh, for squares and chisels and some of the other tools Stanley made. There's also Stanley type studies for planes, but that's a subject for a different day. And of course, no discussion of Stanley squares would be complete without a Eureka Bevel square. This one, unfortunately, is in pretty sad shape, which is why it hasn't been sold yet. It's kind of pitted in that, but see distinctive locking screw on the bottom. The first ones of these were patented by a gentleman by the name of Sargent, July 22nd, 1873. Those do show up from time to time. Another patented one that shows up in this style are the Kernshaw Brothers Eagle Patents, which was issued on February 9th, 1892. And here we have a pair of miter squares. The smaller one was made by R. Marples. Uh, there are two of them that worked from 1837 until 1860, and then the firm became our Marples and Sons, uh, and they were in business till, I believe, 1911. But since this doesn't have the Sons mark on it, I'm thinking it's one of the earlier ones. The bigger one here is marked F. Walters but of Sheffield, but I can't find anything on that particular maker. Might have been just a, a dealer mark. They did do that. But if you notice the diamond plate, that style of square making goes back into the 18th century, although these are both 19th century products. And they're handy tools. Both of them have been cleaned, but they are collectible tools as well. At least they used to be, so. Another square that incorporated both a tri-square and a bevel square was patented by Jonas Halstead and Cornelius Ackerman of New York on June 26, 1855. That's the square on the left in the picture. Some of these had brass or bronze handles. Some of them had uh, steel, cast steel or cast iron handles. Um, they're pretty collectible when you can find them. Stanley copied the design that kept out the bevel with their number 15 squares. And these were originally produced with a brass handle, and then they later went to an iron handle. But it's a combination uh, tri and miter square. Another popular Stanley square are the winter bottom patent tri and miter squares. Charles Winterbottom was granted his original patent on uh, June 29, 1869. The one on the left is an original Winterbottom patent. The one on the right is a Stanley one, which they acquired the rights to and uh, made for a very long time as their uh, number two square. <clears throat> and here we have an assortment of tri-squares. This one's made in the early wooden style, although it's not that old, but <clears throat> I thought it was kind of nice and decided to keep it for my collection with a nice little bit of OG detail on the end there, and it's got a lip so it rests flush on the workbench or the stock that you're working with. Uh, this one was glued. Sometimes you see them that they're screwed together, nailed together, whatever. Here's another neat little wooden tri-square that uh, somebody made for also uh, marking dovetails. Again, it's glued and just a neat little tool. The early tri-squares had the diamonds for holding the handle to the uh, blades, like I showed in the miter squares. Also, they had this kind of a, an escrunchian plate. Well, this one's obviously in kind of rough shape. I haven't done any work on it. 
you find these by a lot of makers, including the earliest Stanleys, which some of them had the eagle mark on this side here. Uh, those are very collectible. Or the original number one Stanley Tri-Squares, which had a brass star let in on this side. And they usually don't have the company mark on them. They show up once in a while, but not very often. This one's kind of a neat one. It's a combination uh, metal square with a wood scaled handle on it. Bring it up closer here. Don't know who made this. I know Starrett made something like this, but I'm not sure if it's a Starrett or not. And it's kind of rough. I haven't done any work on it. It's missing one of the screws, but still kind of a neat square. Distant made tri-squares. This is a number one in a 12 inch size. They made these in 16 and, uh, inches, I think, and uh, maybe up to 18 or 20 inches as well that had levels in the handle, scribes on them. Those are very collectible and hard to find in good shape, especially if they got the original scribe because they tended to walk away a lot. Here we have your basic Stanley number 20 tri-square. This one's a 10-inch model. And of course they made these by the hundreds of thousands over the years. But finding the older ones in good shape is not getting any easier like this one is. And this one somebody else attacked unfortunately, but it's a number one try and miter square. Kind of based on the winter bottom pattern idea of having both the tri square and of course the miter corner on it. And this one I'm going to have to try and see if I can restore at some point in time, but I haven't, again, haven't done much with it. They also made iron handled, just regular tri squares as well. And honestly, you can I could spend all day talking about tri, Stanley tri squares and bevel squares, but this is just to give you a ge quick general overview of what's out there. This is a very unusual bevel square. The fellow that sold it to me called it a bridge builder square, which it could be. The handle is four foot ten inches long. The blade is thirty six inches. It's got some early hardware up the top. Oh, there is a repair up there around the slot. Blade was made from oak. Uh, handle might be as well. I can't say for sure. But one of the neat things about this guy is it was made from a single piece of wood, not pieced. And it works okay, but trying to ship something like this would be a nightmare and a half, I'm afraid. But it's still kind of a neat tool, and one you definitely do not see very often. Well, flea market picking this time of year is always a hit and miss proposition, but uh, this one wasn't too bad for an hour and a half's worth of work, plus you know, two plus hours worth of driving. Up top, draw a knife that'll clean up pretty, should clean up pretty well. That's a dime alloy fencing pliers, good maker, collectible tool. Hand forged stonemason's hammer pick. Pexto, stovepipe shears. Oh man, they've sure not come down in value a lot. I remember I couldn't sell them fast enough at 50, 60 bucks years back. A uh, big union divider, a smaller stair divider, kind of neat bent wood string winder. I haven't been finding too many good primitives lately, but once in a while they do show up. And the catch of the day for this trip was this little Meridian novelty block plane. It's not signed, and I 
dusted the blade off a little bit trying to find a mark, but and it took me some research to figure out who the maker was on this guy, but yeah, it'll clean up okay with some careful restoration. So, again, not a great pile, but it gives me something to do. Here it is cleaned up a little bit. The Meriden the Patent Novelty Company was only in business from 1883 until 1884. And, well, it's got some patina. The Japanese pretty much worn on it. But it's also a pretty rare plane, all things being considered. And that's all for this one, folks. I hope you enjoyed my little video, maybe even learned something. If you like what you're seeing, please hit the subscribe button to be notified when new videos are posted. And thanks again, and bye.